What's going on YouTube? Dalvazar here once again doing another Yu-Gi-Oh! video, this time doing a deck profile of my Phantom Knights deck. Everybody knows who's been watching me that I really like the Phantom Knights, been excited about them since they came out. So I thought I would do a little deck profile of the deck that I've currently been using. I mostly just use pure Phantom Knights, I don't really use the use any engines in it other than just a few cards to support it. But anyway. So let's get started. First we start off with three of the Phantom Knight of Ancient Cloaks. Go ahead and move that closer into frame. Really good card. Let's you search out almost pretty much any monster in the deck. And a couple of the traps. You can just banish it, search it out, search it to your hand. It also has a cool effect where it can give off 800 to a dark monster. Give 800 attack and defense to a dark monster I should say. So it's really good. Next up is three Phantom Knights of Ragged Gloves, another really good card just for the fact that it gives your XZs a thousand attack points when you summon them, because I run mostly dark XZs in this deck, as you probably should. And you can also pitch in one of your spells or traps from your deck to your graveyard, which that would help with like Phantom Knight Sphere later on, or one of the traps to special summon a Phantom Knight from the graveyard, so it's really good. <clears throat> Next is fa three Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. Another really good one, lets you special summon it from the hand if you control another Phantom Knight. Go into some really easy rank three Xyz plays. Also is a searcher for basically all of your spells and traps for Phantom Knights. So also really awesome. Next I run three of the Phantom Knights of Fragile Armor. I thought about just running two. Three seems to be working so far, but I might switch it to two later. It's really good, it lets you, if you draw something that you don't need in your hand, you can, for Phantom Knights at least, you can just pitch it to the graveyard and then draw a new card. It's pretty good. It's also good for the effect that if a Phantom Knight you control gets destroyed, you can special summon it from your hand. So that's really good, so say if Break Sword gets destroyed, you'll get three level fours out, rather than just two, typically, and that can go into some really good rank fours later. Next is two Phantom Knights of Cloven Helm. Pretty good card by itself. Honestly, I was surprised. I wasn't originally going to run it because I thought it was just kind of the worst of them all, but it's honestly really good just for the fact that it gains, it can gain so much attack points in such a little amount of time, so it can get over a bunch of stuff if you really need it to. And also the fact that you can use it to return some of your other Phantom Knights from your graveyard to your hand. Typically, you don't really need it, but sometimes it, it's good. And that's all of the Phantom Knight monsters. <clears throat> Next is two Kagemucha Knights. Really good for going into some easy rank threes. Uh, it's basically kind of like uh, Silent Boots in that all you have to do is normal summon a level three, and then you can special summon this guy from your hand. It's really good. And he's a dark attribute, which will help later. Two Card Troopers. I originally ran two Crane Cranes instead of Card Troopers, but I decided to go with two Card Troopers for now because it kind of speeds up the deck a little bit, helps you get stuff into the graveyard that you need, and basically it's just a really good card. And it gives you one draw once it's, if it's destroyed by battle. <clears throat> and that's all the monsters. That's probably, I didn't count before, but I would say 20 monsters I think. 18 or 20, something or other. So anyways, onto the spells. We run for Phantom Knights. We run two copies of Phantom Knight Spear. I originally just ran one, but I do like running two. You can run one if you want. It just depends on what you like. Just having the two ones, if you have them in the graveyard, you can banish them and negate the destruction of dark monsters. So it's really good. It's on-field effect isn't that great, but it still works. It gives your opponent something to think about and wanting to waste their MST Twin Twisters on, if it's on the field, so. Speaking of Twin Twisters, I run two Twin Twisters. Some really heavy problems for Phantom Knights I've noticed is back row, is if like the opponent is playing, like I played Grave Keepers once, and that just kind of sucked for me, because I didn't have any way of getting rid of Necro Valley. As well as like Kaiser Coliseum, can get rid of that, so. Two Twin Twisters, always nice. 
Uh, now for one ofs, we have one Rota because Phantom Knights are Warriors, so why not? One Allure of Darkness. Not sure how I feel about this one. It's really good because pretty much everything in the deck is dark, so typically you'll get two. You'll use its effects, and even if you discard from your hand, a lot of the cards are, go to the graveyard. So it is pretty good. I'm not sure if I might replace it with something else later, but we'll see. One Regeki because Regeki. One Foolish Burial. Really good for getting Ancient Cloak into the graveyard if you need to get another Phantom Knight. Or even uh, Ragged Gloves into the graveyard, then put Ancient Cloaks into the graveyard from Ragged Gloves and then get something from your hand if you really want to just cycle through your deck. Uh, one Burial of the Different Dimension, or Burial from the Different Dimension, sorry. Uh, really good for getting everything back in your graveyard, or at least a few things. Get your Ancient Cloaks back, get your Ragged, ragged Gloves back, get your Sound Boots back. Just pretty good. Uh, and also one Mass Change second, because I do run Dark Law in this deck, because I really like Dark Law. So it's a really good card. Sometimes, most of the time you'll pitch it using something else. From your, you'll mill it from your deck, but oh well. It's still a really good card for this deck, and I just love Dark Law, so. Next onto the traps, we have three Phantom Knight's Fog Blades. Really good trap. Basically a Fiendish Chain that special summons from the graveyard as well later. It's really good. If you have Break Sword out with this on an opponent's monster, you can destroy this and destroy the monster that it affects, so it's basically just destroying a monster and negating its effects at the same time. So it's great. Three Phantom Knight's Wings. Really good card, just because it, the buff is great, 500 attack. It's a lot better than you'd think it would be. The fact that it protects your monster from getting destroyed once that turn, really good. And the fact that it special summons more Phantom Knights from the graveyard. Just really good. Next is three Needle Bug Nests. Really great trap card. Helps you just go through your deck, get more things into the graveyard, which you need, because basically Phantom Knights, your graveyard is also your hand, which is amazing. That's why I love them. Helps you speed up the deck. Next we run two of the Phantom Knights of Shadow Veil. And I'm not too sure about this. I was running three before, but then I switched out one for something else I don't remember. And this is surprisingly good. This has these cards have helped out a lot. I kind of want to go back to three, but just that 300 attack, it helps you a lot more than you'd think it would, especially with like uh, Cloven Helm. The fact that it you can give 300 to him, it goes to the graveyard. That gives him another 500. That's 800 attack, or 300 defense. Or, yeah, so it's a lot better than you think it would be. And if you just need that like one turn of stalling before next turn, you get out everything. Is a good card to have if your opponent's going to try and go for game directly. So you can just bring this back from the graveyard. Defend yourself. And then one of the Phantom Knight's sword I used to run to. Might go back to two. We'll see. I'm still playtesting the deck. But a Phantom Knight's sword, really good. 800 attack. And then you can also special summon from the grave. And it also negates destruction of a card. Of a monster equipped with it. So, really good. Really like it. People don't appreciate it as much as they should. Love it. And now onto the extra deck. Uh, we have three Phantom Knights of Breaksword. Very awesome card. Love it to death. It's just probably the best card in the deck, or one of at least. Just so good. You destroy one of your own cards, which half the time will honestly be a Fog Blade. At least for me. And then you destroy one of your opponent's cards. So it's just great. And then we got for my other two rank threes, we have Livia's Sea Dragon, the Sea Dragon, and Dante. I would probably run two Dante if I had to, but I don't, so I do that. And then Levia is just a really good rank three. I've been debating with some other rank threes, like I did have Nightmare Shark in here for a while. So I might go back to running Nightmare Shark as well for a rank three. But We'll we'll see. Those are all the only rank three so that, that I have. So next, I run three of Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. 
one of my just favorite cards, so I'd like to run three. You can, it's probably smarter to run different rank fours, but I just really like it. People don't expect you to run three. They just think, oh, I got past one, I don't have to really worry about another one. And then you pull out two more and they just, it's just ridiculous. So, all of different rarities too, because it's fun. Uh, next, I like Black Ship of Corn. It's Dark Monster, so it gets that Ragged Gloves ability that you could really want. Sorry, that was my dog sneezing in the background. Bless you, dog. So, really good card. Destroys opponent's monster with less attack than it does and then deals a thousand damage. So, combine that with uh, Ragged Gloves and it's just really good. Silent Arc, because Silent Arc is just really good for taking control. I don't know if I want to keep this in the deck, per se. It's probably one of the ones I would switch out if I had something better. I might do it once Utopia the Lightning comes out. We'll see. Um, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I never do. But Heroic Champion Ragnaminad. Let me see if I can read this. Rongminad. Rongminad? That guy. It's a really good card. There have been several games that I've had where I've had five level fours on the board, and then I just summon this guy, and you pretty much win, because you can just wipe out the entire, the other person's board. The only thing that can stop him is like a Solemn Strike, or a Solemn Warning, but it's just so good. Uh, one Castell, and one Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller is good against this deck, but it's also good against a lot of other decks, so I also run it in here. And when I did run Nightmare Shark, it was good to have another water monster on the field, so that way you could have him attack directly. So that's just the main reason I run Abyss Dweller. That's just good. The next is Utopic Future and Dark Law, of course. But Utopic Future, very good card. You, Everything in here is rank 3s and 4s, so it's really easy to get out Utopic Future. Very fewer number monsters. I think besides... Yeah... Heroic Tra Champion and 101, I think those are the only numbers that I have in here. So it's really easy to get out Utopic Future. Really easy to just... He's really good against so many decks, so why not run him? And then Dark Law for a lot of decks. Pendulum decks, Light Swarms. It's just really good to have Dark Law. So anyway, that is the entire deck. I do have a side deck too, but I don't feel like getting that out and showing you. It's basically just like what you typically run in a side deck. But anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys have any suggestions or things that you run in your Phantom Knights decks, Phantom Knights decks, yeah, I guess that makes sense, uh, let me know, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.